History repeats itself, and this Fermi GT730 is proof for that. This is not going to be just a usual review, but also some sort of a reminder of what happens when bad behavior goes unpunished or is completely forgotten. And there is a reason I'll be talking more about Nvidia here. You see, there is a difference between having the same chip under different video card names and having different chips under the same name. If the former can be called rebranding, the latter is closer to a bait and switch. The first of the antics that Nvidia pulled that I can remember happened in the early 2000s. The GeForce 4 Ti cards were already released. The MX series, however, turned out to be just souped up GeForce 2 chips. And while I did not get to experience the GeForce 8800 confusion firsthand with all the possible variants GS, GT, and GTX, I did get bitten by the Fermi GT730. I did not do my homework, and while I was looking for a display adapter that would do a better job at video decoding than the Intel HD 2000, I was still hoping that some gaming would still be in the cards. But it turned out that between the three cards with the same name, I ended up getting the worst of them. You see, the GF108 GPU, used by the Fermi GT730, has just 96 shaders, compared to the 4 times that amount that comes with the Kepler variant. And with just 4 ROPs, the Fermi variant had less the pixel throughput of the Kepler cards. To add insult to injury, having chips from different architectures under the same video card name would turn out to bite consumers once again, a few good years after getting burned by getting the old Fermi instead of the new Kepler. In 2018, Nvidia decided to no longer support the Fermi architecture with updated drivers. Kepler cards? Oh, those would enjoy driver updates for more than 3 years after. We'll go into more details on the driver's topic later in the video, and since we're pretending to review the Fermi GT730, it makes sense to mention the test system and the game settings used. Some of you are already familiar with the Z230 and the i7-4772 equivalent Xeon. As for RAM, the PC uses 32GB of DDR3 running in dual channel at 1600MHz. Unless stated otherwise, all games run at 1280x720 resolution at low settings. And speaking of games, what titles can we roll out when it comes to playing them on the Fermi GT730? We'll start with the two games that flat out refuse to launch with the card in the system, Resident Evil 4 and Battlefield 5. Resident Evil 4 does require feature level support of 11.1 at minimum, and its refusal to launch was expected. As for Battlefield 5, well, it didn't launch on the Fermi GT730 two years ago, so no surprise here either. Still, just because the game launches it doesn't mean that you can actually play it on the GT730, and one fine example of such a game is Control. 720 resolution and low settings was too much for the card, and the average FPS failed to reach double digits. Keeping up with the disappointment, we have Apex Legends, with an average FPS of less than cinematic, but at least in the double digits. And at 720 resolution and low settings, the GT730 might just allow you to see who got you eliminated. A somewhat better experience can be had in Rainbow Six Siege, especially if you plan to be the practice target for everyone in the enemy team. You can choose between less than cinematic frame rates and the full graphical glory of the 720 resolution, or each single player playable performance at the cost of a visual experience rivaling a myopic person without its glasses. While the average FPS in CS2 was a marked improvement over what we got in Rainbow Six Siege, failing to breach the 60 FPS is a sure way to rage quitting the match, and at 37 FPS on average, the GT730 is the ticket to that. I bet even camping feels bad in Splitgate if you run the Fermi GT730. With an average FPS of 38 at 720 resolution, I'd consider myself lucky to have a neutral KD. I promised myself that I would keep an open mind and not judge anybody, but if you plan to play Overwatch 2 with this card, I have only one piece of advice for you. Seek help. Do you hate your teammates so much that you want to be the reason why they lose the game? An FPS in the low 40s may be okay for single player, but in this game, you'll be lucky to get a few kills. Fortnite does not perform that much better than Overwatch 2. Fortunately though, the game does allow solo play, so the mid 40s FPS for the average will not be the cause for your list of online friends getting shorter. But it could be the reason why you get eliminated quite quickly. Just something to think about. Now, the good news is that things start to look up from this point on, as we move into titles that are less demanding. Alien Isolation is one of the older single player titles, and the Fermi GT730 manages an average of 31 FPS. Now, that is with all settings maxed out. Turning them to a medium value, when available, 
as the average FPS increased by 6. While the game does not require fast reaction, the increased FPS is likely to improve the game experience, so this is a fair trade to me. GTA 5 is another older single player title, and at 720 resolution and lower settings, I managed an respectable 51 FPS for the average and 35 FPS for the 1% lows. I played games with worse performance than that, so I'm not complaining about this one. Keeping up with the non-PvP titles, Warframe will run acceptably on the Fermi GT 730 with an average FPS in the mid-50s. While not an ideal experience, I don't expect the performance of the car to be a major headache either. On the multiplayer side of things, the trio of games from hi Studio may also be something the owners of the GT 730 Fermi variant may want to try. Rogue Company is the more demanding of them, it will run on average at 55 FPS and will get 1% lows in the mid-30s. Ram Royale may also pose some challenges, and while the average FPS is 66, the game map is quite large, so expect the performance to fluctuate by quite a bit. Paladins on the other hand felt quite solid, with an average of 72 FPS, and 1% lows at low 50s. Dota 2 will also run well on the GT 730, and at 720 resolution and low settings, except for the render scale, that stayed at 100%. The card average 98 FPS and the 1% lows stayed in the high 60s. Rocket League also performed well on the tiny Fermi card, with an average FPS in the mid 80s and the 1% lows in the low 30s. Unlike most cases where Valorant is CPU bound, this time around the GT 730 turned out to be the weakling. The average FPS did not exceed mid 90s and the 1% lows almost reached 70 FPS. And to end on a high note, I played a match of World of Tanks Blitz at 1080 resolution and the GT730 still managed to average 60 FPS, with 1% lows at 59. At the beginning of this review, I teased a bit with some driver issues, so here's the full story. Less than 4 years after releasing the GT730, Nvidia stopped game-ready drivers for the Fermi architecture. Kepler, however, remained supported for more than 3 years longer. Question. What drivers do you think the NVIDIA drivers page provides when searching for a package for a GT730? If you answered for the Kepler one, you'd be correct. But if you happened to own the Fermi GT730, attempting to install it would get you this flawless, using air quotes here, flawless user experience. Now, knowing that the GPU under the hood also powered the GT430 will help you in choosing the correct driver package and that is the latest available for the aforementioned 430 card. Nvidia didn't stop doing this with the GT730. Things got even worse, and what I'll describe here is the reason why I'm going after Nvidia alone here. You see, Nvidia added another element to the gimmick. Very much like a magician tries to misdirect your attention, the greed... oh, sorry, meant green here. The green company used the misdirection itself. See if you can spot it in one of these examples. The GTX 1060 3G, where the difference to the 6G variants was more than the 3GB of VRAM, the RTX 3060 8G, where again, the difference amounts to more than 4GB of GDDR6, or the RTX 480 12GB, where the difference to the 480 is more than the VRAM amount. The only reason you don't see the 4080 12GB was the pushback from the community that led to the card being unreleased. Now, English is not my first language, but even I know that that's not a word. So, the card was unreleased, then re-released as the 4070 Ti. They also said that the only thing needed for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. And obviously, good men having the memory span of an ant is probably one of the reasons why history repeats itself, and anti-consumer practices proliferate. As for the good men that I mentioned, that's not going to be the FTC or any regulatory body, although that would be nice. No, we are the good men and that makes us responsible for the fact that these practices continue. As for the Fermi GT730 itself, it did the job that I got it for, and that is H.264 video decoding, but that was to be expected since the original GT430 was envisioned as an HTPC card. Now, the card will play older games, and depending on the settings, one could get a good enough experience without sacrificing too much of the graphical fidelity. As Stalker 2 is poised to be released, you might want to play the older titles in the series, and the tiny card can pull it off, with 42 FPS on average and 1% lows of 30. 
Or maybe you'd like to give an older Wolfenstein title a chance. The card will do it, and at 720 resolution and high settings, the average FPS reaches mid 50s and 1% lows stay in the high 30s. Unfortunately, the more popular esports titles are off the table, except maybe Battlebeat Remastered. This means that the Fermi GT730 is more of a collection item. A functioning one, true, but there are better display adapters out there, and links to their reviews should be on the screen right now. As for this video, we're done. I hope you liked it and I'll